hear from uh, Dr. Witt now. Well, I'm going to um, take a few seconds uh, off schedule also to talk about uh, uh, Charlie Bass and his comments. Um, and I hope to uh, show that he's 180% uh, wrong. Uh, and uh, right now I'm batting cleanup, so I'm hoping that I can uh, hit everybody home with this uh, uh, lecture that I'm going to give. I'm obligated to say I have no financial um, uh, conflict or um, uh, uh, influence on this talk. I also want to tell you that uh, Charlie Bass was wrong about talking about the uh, health effects just being something that started this past year. Uh, you've already seen research that was done 20 years ago beginning looking at the health effects of uh, climate change. I was one of two doctors invited um, uh, from the United States to participate in the first ever uh, workshop on health effects of climate change uh, uh, with the European Respiratory Society. This was held in Belgium. And uh, we had um, members from all over uh, Europe uh, with two representatives from the United States. And we were meeting with climatologists, public health uh, officials, uh, doctors from all the uh, different uh, 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 countries. And I will tell you the one thing that came out of that meeting that was emphasized was that we need to look at the health effects of climate change in order to get advocacy change. And that's where that's going to come from. Um, my talk is going to be, where's the beef? I'm going to show you the beef. Because we've got the data, we've got the scientific evidence to prove that climate change has caused health effects. Okay. I'm not going to get into the politics of the climate change, but I am going to show you and give you hard data on what climate change is doing now and what it potentially can do in the future. This is a statement from the Department of Defense Quadrennial Review Report from 2010. And I quote it, climate change will contribute to food and water scarcity, will inc increase the spread of disease, and may spur exacerbate mass uh, or exacerbate mass migration. Now this is the Department of Defense making these statements. This is the Department of Defense identifying that this is a problem. Next slide, please. These are the areas of concerns in the United States that I'm going to be talking about, the effects of climate change on respiratory disease. I'm a pulmonologist, critical care physician, allergist immunologist. I'm a professor at University of New Hampshire, which has done research uh, with um, asthma. I'm also on the Environmental Health Policy Committee for the uh, uh, American Thoracic Society, which advises the EPA on ozone and other um, uh, issues that the EPA has to deal with. I'm going to concentrate, however, on the respiratory uh, concerns with uh, uh, climate change, respiratory health, heat waves, increased pollution, and of course, asthma and allergy. Next slide, please. I just want to briefly define a little bit so that it, we're all on the same page with climate change. It is the de destabilization of Earth's climate due to altered composition of the atmosphere, increased concentrations of greenhouse gases such as CO2 and methane. Greenhouse gases trap solar radiation leading to global warming. Next slide, please. Some of the basic aspects. Greenhouse gas concentrations are increasing. Greenhouse gases affect the climate system. World average temperature has risen relatively fast over the past 30 years. Sea level rise is gradually accelerating. Many temperature sensitive systems and process have changed over the past two decades. And we know that with severe increase in temperature, there will be disruption of the foundations of life on Earth. Next, please. Key determinants of greenhouse gases include energy production, energy consumption and efficiency, transport, agriculture and food production, as well as waste management. The environmental factors that we can link to climate change include extreme summer events, extreme winter events, air pollution, forest fires, thunderstorms and floods, and of course we've had the uh, horrific uh, tornado effects 
uh, recently as well. Allergens and dampness and mold. Diseases of interest are going to be talked about today include asthma, rhinitis and allergies, COPD, which stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and respiratory infections. The issues that we're going to be talking about include uh, biomass burning, windblown dust, and biofuel emissions. Uh, there is a, a significant amount of impact uh, that we see from biomass. Rural areas in the United States burn wood for fuel. This may have an impact, uh, greater impact in colder winters. Droughts in western United States cause forest fires. We're going to talk about that health effect. In biotic symptoms, uh, systems, the long and warmer growing seasons have an effect, especially on uh, plants such as ragweed. Enhanced pollen production other than ragweed, and pollen production by ragweed increases with higher CO2 levels. This is not debatable. This is fact. I will first talk about forest fires. Next slide. Anthony, thanks. This is a, a picture of sugarcane burning in uh, southern Brazil. You can see the extent of the fire, the extent of the pollution, and uh, this is the contrast of the uh, pollutant on the um, outline of that city. Next slide. This is a, um, a satellite uh, photo from uh, uh, October of 2007 looking at California's wildfires and you look and see the extent out into the Pacific of the flume for the uh, smoke from those wildfires. This is wildfires uh, and uh, actually um, set fires that were uh, in Greece in 2007. I actually was in Greece the year after this and the devastation to the land was incredible. But what you can see is the extent of the fires. You can see the um, uh, amount of smoke. This is a smoke cloud coming in upon that city and this is what it does to the um, um, sun blocking it out because of the intensity of the smoke. Okay. So we have all these uh, nice pictures and we have all these thoughts. Where's the hard data? Here is the hard data. This is from 2003, Southern California wildfires effect on children. And what it shows is that with the exposure to the uh, uh, smoke, there is a significant increase in symptoms of wheezing. This is um, uh, showing where there was no fire, when the fire occurred, and then there's a delay and a lag where wheezing increases. The next slide is a, a study looking at hospital admissions for asthma due to increased air pollution from uh, forest fires. You're going to see that the, uh, uh, the day of the exposure and then there's an increase with a, uh, a lag from one to five days. This is uh, showing uh, clearly the relationship between the exposure and the incidence of asthma. Next slide. I'm going to switch now to extreme summer events. Uh, this, uh, I'm surprised no one showed this chart, but this is the um, uh, temperature change over the uh, centuries, and it's the hockey stick um, 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 uh, picture that everybody talks about. Next slide. And I'm going to show you uh, studies that are directly related to health effects of increased temperature. When we look at uh, Hale's study in 1998, for every one degree centigrade increase in monthly mean temperature, there is 1% increase in asthma prevalence. Uh, here there are two studies, DeMarco in 2002, uh, Zanolin in 2004. This shows increase in prevalence of asthma symptoms with a higher annual mean temperature. And then there's one other that was uh, uh, done in 2004, and the important message out of this one is the increase in prevalence of asthma symptoms with an increase in the lowest monthly mean temperature. These are all related only to the temperature. The variables for other uh, causes have been removed. Next. Air pollution. Uh, you've heard an awful lot about air pollution and ozone. I'm going to give you the medical 
studies showing the effect that ozone has. Uh, first of all, uh, ozone does uh, affect uh, uh, asthma exacerbations. It is a causative factor with asthma. It has an irritative respiratory effect, as you've heard before, but it also interacts with other pollutants and exacerbates the medical problems. Next slide. This is a, um, a slide showing the correlation between concentration of ozone and the daily number of asthma attacks. You see there's a linear correlation between the two. Next slide. And this is a very nice study uh, that was done uh, in Southern California. 3,500 children were followed for five years. We were looking at the asthma incidence in relationship to outdoor sports, and that was brought up earlier as well. Well, here's the beef. In high ozone, there is a significant increase in new doctor diagnosis of asthma. If you participated in more than three outdoor sports, there is an increased risk with asthma. In high ozone, no significant difference in low ozone. The more time that you spent outdoors had a significant increase with asthma. In high ozone, no difference in low ozone. So here's a five-year longitudinal study exactly showing the effect that ozone has uh, on children, especially with the effect on asthma. Next study. I threw this slide in here. Um, I thought more would be uh, mentioned about this by other speakers. But this is a case study of real world tailpipe emissions for school buses using a 20% biodiesel blend. Now, this was added to the petroleum diesel in order to make it more efficient. And they thought that it would have actually a beneficial effect. If you look at these columns here, this is particulate matter. There was a statistically significant increase in particulate matter when the biodiesel was added to the petroleum diesel. Next slide, please. I'm going to talk about some other environmental factors, uh, dampness and mold, specifically mold. When I talk about mold, uh, actually go back to the other slide, please. When I talk about mold, I'm going to talk about it in a non uh, allergenic or non-allergic way, but we will be talking about it uh, in other slides as an allergen as well. And right now, I would tell you that mold is going to be the biggest problem for health in the future. And certainly when you go just look outside and see how wet the environment is, you know why that's true. Next slide, Anthony, thank you. This is a meta-analysis of the Association of Respiratory Health effects with dampness and mold in the homes in the United States. And it shows a positive odds ratio where wheezing is associated with the increased exposures to the dampness and to the mold. Next study. This study um, from 2005 looks at new onset symptoms associated with a doubling in indoor fungal levels over a two year period. What you see is that there's a statistically significant increase in current asthma. There's an increase in attacks of asthma. And this slide, A to P, is allergies. So there's a statistically significant increase in allergies as well. And I'll show you more about that in subsequent slides. Next uh, slide, please. This is sensitization to airborne molds and severity of asthma. This is a cross-sectional study. This was performed uh, in several countries, including the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and in Europe. And there shows the statistical significance with a multivariate uh, adjusted odds ratio showing an association between the severity of asthma and the airborne molds. So we have hard data. This is not speculation. Next, please. This is a temporal association between daily counts of fungal spores and asthma exacerbations. This is visits to your doctor. This is hospital, hospital admissions. And this is increase in the age group between 0 and 14. I want to emphasize that because other slides are going to show you that it is our children that are being most affected by the effects of climate change and health. All of these are um, uh, positive correlations. Next slide, please. This is brand new. Uh, this is a uh, study that was 
uh, presented at the international uh, meeting of the American Thoracic Society a couple of weeks ago in Denver, Colorado. Uh, this is uh, a poster that was presented there from the Harvard School of Public Health, and it shows an association between early life fungal in, uh, exposure, repeated measures of wheezing assessed from birth through age 13. So all of you uh, mothers here who have young children, or those of us who have grandchildren, this is an important study that is showing a correlation between the exposure of mold and the uh, uh, um, observation of wheezing. Next slide. Their conclusion from this study, um, uh, it's the role of early life, um, I can't read that, fungi in the development of wheeze, asthma, and rhinitis in children followed from birth through age 13. Their conclusions were elevated total indoor air fungi in infant bedrooms were associated with increased odds of wheeze from birth to age 13. Increased levels of indoor alternaria, a mold, predicted increased risk of asthma development. In other words, the more that you're exposed to these molds, the higher your risk is for developing disease. The disease in this case is asthma. The disease in this case, higher concentrations of outdoor air cladosporium, bedroom floor dust aspergillus, and yeast predicted increased risk of allergic rhinitis development. Not only are you having the asthma burden, but a much larger burden, which wasn't actually brought up in the uh, economics of it, but in the m billions of dollars, is from allergic rhinitis. And unfortunately, I'm not recommending Claritin anymore, and I'll tell you about that one uh, also, but that's not the drug of choice anymore for allergies. Okay, next slide, please. This is a slide on, um, from Katrina. This is airborne mold, endotoxins, and glucans. Endotoxins are produced by molds. They are not an allergy, but they cause significant health um, conditions. And this, these dramatic pictures here uh, correlate with findings looking at homes that had mild to moderate to heavy damage from Katrina, and you can see the incredibly high amount of mold that was found in those homes. Next slide is very impressive. This is a mold damaged gypsum wallboard, and you can see how much mold is on it, and this is what was cultured from that wallboard, how many different species of mold. Next slide, please. I'm going to talk last on allergens, okay? Uh, this is a major health hazard that's developing in the United States, but all over the world. Next slide. I'm going to give you definite medical, scientific evidence of the effect of CO2 on health. It's here. It's actually been done in Boston uh, through Harvard. And the effect of increased CO2 on plants. CO2 has a large fertilization effect, particularly on plants such as ragweed. Plants grow larger, use water more effectively, and reach maturity faster. Recent evidence also suggests enhanced reproductive effort uh, in softwoods and hardwoods, especially oaks. And I will tell you, last year, we had the highest oak pollen concentration ever recorded. I had people, I had patients coming to me who had never had problems with allergies complaining about the allergies. Next slide. So, okay, is there any other data that proves that CO2 has an effect? This was a study done in Boston, uh, and it is looking at ragweave uh, pollen production in relationship to CO2. Pollen concentration here, CO2 concentration here. When you increase the concentration, there's a statistical significant increase in pollen concentration of ragweed. And here's the surprising um, uh, finding that was also found. Next slide. It's not in the rural areas. Where you're finding the high concentrations are in the cities and in the suburbs, not in um, semi-rural or rural areas. And this is correlated with the heat island effect of cities and the CO2 that's being produced. Next. This is brand new information. Nobody's got this information yet. 
This is a um, uh, study that was just uh, published approximately three or four weeks ago from Quest Diagnostics. Quest Diagnostics uh, is the largest uh, blood laboratory around this area here, LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics. Anyone who's getting any blood drawn, this is where it goes to, from your doctor's office, okay? What they showed is they had, they took their clients, because they're not physicians, so they don't call them patients, uh, they took their clients and they looked at uh, four years worth of uh, in vitro testing, in other words, blood testing for allergy sensitization, and what they found was a significant increase over the past four years of IgE sensitization. IgE is the um, antibody that is uh, associated with allergies. Next slide. This is the percent change in IgE sensitization rates to environmental allergens. This is specific now. The other was nonspecific elevation. This is specific elevation to specific allergens. And lo and behold, what do we see? We see a 14.8% increase in sensitization to ragweed. These are people's blood that are saying they are now allergic to ragweed. What else do we see? We see an 11.6% increase in sensitization to mold. It's over four years, the same period? Correct. Over four years, the same period. So it's showing that people are becoming more allergic to ragweed and also to mold. This is the entire population of their, uh, their blood tests? Mm -hmm. Next. Asthma uh, um, uh, prevalence and asthma attack prevalence are uh, uh, shown in this slide from January 12, 2011 from the National Health Statistical Report. And uh, what I want to show you here is starting from 1980, looking to 1996, there's a steady increase in asthma prevalence. We also had a report uh, from NHIS looking at current asthma prevalence from 2001 to 2009, also showing the uh, increase in asthma. Next. This is a report from the CDC, May 6, 2011. And what it shows is the asthma prevalence by age, group, and sex. This top line here is children aged 18 or under. The solid line is total population. You can see that there's a significant increase in the number with children, and there's also an increase in total population as well. Next slide is going to emphasize this even further. This is a percentage of persons who experience an asthma episode within the past 12 months. This is from the CDC, June 2010. And I want to draw your attention to this column, these columns, which are children under age 15 who have a significant increase in asthma episodes. Next. This is my last slide uh, showing the hard data. And basically what it shows is, again, prevalence of current asthma among persons of all ages. And what you're seeing is a rise in that percentage. If we have 330 so million population in the United States and over 8% have asthma, you can do the math. That's a lot of people with asthma. This doesn't show the incidence of allergies, which is even much higher. And allergies produce many other symptoms. One of the most, uh, actually the most chronic disease in the United States is chronic sinusitis. More people have had chronic sinusitis than any other disease. And that's a correlation also with allergies. And I'll leave you with one last slide. Uh, which is from the International Institute for Strategic Studies. I tried to take uh, quotes from organizations that um, would not have any um, political uh, problems from either the right or the left. And this states that climate change will increase the risks of resource shortages, mass migration, and civil conflict. These could lead to failed states which threaten global stability and security. That's why climate change is that big of a deal. Thank you very much.